Or get crazy with the old guy. The whole world is crazy, man. Man, women today, women today are crazy, man. My wife, y'all don't know my wife, because my wife is crazy, man. You ever eat cheese doodles? Cheese doodles are crazy. <laughs> Hey, what's up, YouTube? This is Talking Crazy 88 back again with another episode for you. Wanted to do a quick video before I head it before I head to bed. Got to get up really, really early tomorrow to catch that express bus. I got to tell you, that's one of the luxuries of life, people. Is that never having to deal with niggers on the subway. Catch the bus. I'm there about the same amount of time, but I'm living. I'm, I'm going into work in comfort. It's always a seat. The seats are comfortable, and I can just sleep on the bus without any niggas trying to harass me. It's lovely. Well, listen, gang. Wanted to do a quick video before um, tonight. Um, um, it's going to be part, well, first I wanted to make an announcement. I wanted to do a reading sometime this weekend on uh, the first three chapters of the book, The Black Man's Guide to Understanding the Black Woman. I'm going to post it up sometime this weekend. So um, that should be a treat for you guys because you, there's some information that you need to need to get a hold of. Um, and, and speaking about speaking of Sister Shahrazad, well, first before I want to talk about Shahrazad Ali, um, because um, um, because I wanted to do. A commentary on a radio interview that she recently did on an internet radio show. Um, I'm going to post the link in a description box because a lot of you guys need to hear this information. This Shahrazad Ali is a sharp sister. I'm telling you right now. Um, She's given us clues and information that black folks, um, we're not ready for what's going, what's going to happen in the next few years, because there's going to be a whole new change, a paradigm change. Um, there's this book called pa uh, Powernomics, which I am going to start reading, and those of you out there should get a copy of that book. It's by Dr. Claude Anderson, and he discusses that what true racism is and how blacks, black folks are left out, are going to be left out in the cold because we are not controlling our industries. We are not um, in businesses where we are, that will sustain us such as growing our own food or operating our own um, um, uh, our own uh, food merchants. Um, we're, not, we're not in those industries. We have no way of sustaining, sustaining ourselves if there's a change of paradigm comes. If there's a change coming in a few years where there's going to be a shortage of resources where we are unable to, we are unable to get access, gain access to, because all the rest of the groups, race groups, have that shit locked down. And, and don't think you're going to be rolling up on these niggas and start thugging, because they, they will take you out just as quick. See, all of y'all on that See, I'm going to do a video on gun control, but this is the reason why black folks should not be involved in that gun control bullshit. 
Because it's just to emasculate us. It's, it's just to strip us naked when the time comes when, we, when there really is a war. We're going to be unprepared. We're going to be left to slaughter. See, we're up here on YouTube. Instead of gaining information, gaining information from other brothers and sisters on how to be self-sufficient, we're up here arguing with each other on bullshit. See, Tommy so there's a brother named Tommy Sotomayor in his talk show. I love his show. I love listening to his show. But see, there's a lot of niggers out there that want to take him out because he says some things that I agree with. There's a lot I don't agree with because I'm on the economic side of of uh, black folks being interdependent, independent from other other groups. See, we, we tend, we are on that Dr. King shit that we should be integrated with one another. We should share. See, that's the worst thing that could ever happen to us. And I'm going to explain something to you. Um, during the civil rights era, the lunch counter where these black folks went into these white establishments who did not want our money, didn't want our black behinds in that store, didn't even want to take our money. All right? We weren't allowed, we weren't being served at their establishments. When we had our own establishments that we could patronize. You know, I, I kind of wish they did keep segregation alive at that moment for economic reasons. Because we had our own shit. Shit, hell, we had Black Wall Street. But you know what happened? We were, again, the same thing that's going to happen to us again. We were left, they were, those brothers and sisters were left naked, unarmed, unable to protect themselves from these nick, white niggers, these white trash niggers who destroyed a whole a community of people. See, we up here are we up here begging for begging for crumbs, begging for reparations, begging for crumbs when we should when we have access to politi access politically to change the credit system in our country. See, Dr. Shaharaz Ali, and I'm going to post that video too. Uh, another brother, well, actually, I'm going to post that interview, but it, it was a brother on Gen X that posted that video. And I think everybody should hear this interview with this sister. Because um, it's a damn shame what they're doing to us. And you don't, and, and black folks, we're too blind to see it, or we sticking we're sticking our heads under the sand, not being able to see what's going on with our children, especially in the education system. The educational system was set up for black folk the little black children to fail. Okay? Why why the fuck do you think they're creating all these prisons? They're not creating prisons for white people. They're creating prisons for us. Think about it. They're building prisons out in Montana, and they can't even fill the goddamn thing. They can't even fill it up. Because let me tell you something. Who's going to go? Who's, who's sending white people to prison? They're sending all black ass to prison because niggas like to break the law. Now, believe me, there are some niggas that belong in prison. But you got to understand something. The food that we're eating and the laws that they're creating is set up, is designed for us to be depending on that system. See, when you up here, instead of fighting for Medicare, free, the Medicare bill, 
the Medicare overhaul, the medical uh, medical insurance overhaul. You know, nobody realizes that that's a setup for something big. Why not just, why not as black folks just take care of ourselves by not eating all this crap that we're putting in our system? Now, people might argue, hey, man, I've been eating pork for years. It ain't kill me. But yet, so did my grandmother. But yet, before she died, she was having health problems all over the goddamn place. She could barely walk. She has, she, my, my grandmother was over 250 50 pounds when she died, passed away. And she barely could ever, she had to be pushed around in a wheelchair, having high blood pressure, surviving two heart attacks. My grandmother down south had a stroke before she passed away 15 years, 20 years ago. It was designed for us to go in and out of the hospital for doctors to, for doctors to make money off of the insurance companies. They're making money off of us. That's what it's designed to do. Medicine, modern medicine was not meant to treat people. It was meant for people to come back into the hospital to go see the doctor every time that we have certain ailments because we're eating, we're re eating the wrong type of food. See, I am going to try to vegan, go, go to vegan route. I'm going to wean myself off of red meat. I've already weaned myself off of we red meat. And I damn sure stop eating pork. Now, the, the laws that they created, the bullshit laws, it's bullshit. It's meant for you to go into the system, young man, black man. It, it's meant to, to, to have, for you to have a record. You, you want to know why? When you have a record, that keeps you from gaining access to the good jobs. See, now, if we had our own economy, if we had our own way of sustaining ourselves, our own way of being self-sufficient, then we wouldn't have to depend on other groups to feed us. Black women, when we talk about how they go into the self-esteem issue. Shahrazad Ali, she goes into the self-esteem issue of black women, black American women. Why? They have to wear fake hair, fake nails, fake titties, fake ass, fake lips. Because they believe that this is what we, as a black man, this is what we're attracted to. When it really isn't. See, I'm attracted to women who have natural hair. I'm attracted to that. I, lo I love a woman that has their own hair. The afro, the twists, the dreads, the braids. I love it. Sexy to me, man. That's the way God intended you to, to wear your hair. Not anybody else's hair. Not plastic hair. But yet, you're, you, you're willing to give the Asians. You're willing to give the Indians all your money for nasty hair to put in your head. You're willing to beg for people, other groups of people to open up shops in our own neighborhoods. See, let me tell you something. Let me, let me explain something to you. To, to all you pseudo businessmen out there that's in the record business, 
or ra or artist or record business or record producer or whatever that bullshit bullshit ass um, um, businesses that you open. Um, sit down, come up with some more sit with some decent economic development. It's not sexy. It may not make you any mo real money in the long term. In the short term, it may not give you out notoriety, but at least you you're you're giving your people something to be so, to be self sufficient. Where where in the next few years we'll be able to survive in the new world that we, that is coming. Well, listen, I gotta run. I may do a second part to this uh, to this video, but um, I just want you guys to keep in mind that we gotta be, we gotta start thinking. We gotta change our mode of thinking instead of trying to be at each other's throats, discussing about sex and relationships and all that bullshit. That's not gonna help us in the next five years. We are sitting ducks, people. We are sitting ducks. We are the prey. And they're the hunters. I just want y'all guys to think about that. Just think about it for a minute. But listen, I got to run. This is Talking Crazy 88, and I am out of here, people. And that's when the grows.